Um, and it, it's seen a big pressure over the weekend, hasn't it's it? It's been the busiest weekend, they say, of, of the year. Uh, yeah. And, of course, we've got trouble coming down the tracks. The nursing unions, they're planning to strike this week, although not at this hospital. The nurses have voted to strike here, but the union aren't calling them out just yet. They're keeping them in reserve, basically. Mm -hmm. And they would be willing to spend the walkout. This is the nurses' union now. They would be willing to postpone the strikes if the health secretary agrees to open what they describe as serious discussions about pay. Well, we're joined now by the mental health minister, uh, one of the members of the health department, who also has experience of working as an NHS nurse and still do, I understand, don't you, Maria Caulfield? Um, you still do some shifts every year. So you very much know the challenges. Uh, you're working within the health department as well. Why do you not meet and talk with the nurses' unions directly? Because they've said they'll call off the strikes if you do. Well, just to be clear, um, we, the Secretary of State has met with the health unions, including the RCN, uh, a number of times recently. He, in fact, uh, offered a meeting last month, which they turned down. So I welcome the fact, and I know Pat, um, I've met Pat quite a few times. I'm also a member of the Royal College of Nursing uh, myself, and Pat is a tremendous campaigner and absolutely is standing up for her nurses. But it's, I welcome the move that she wants to sit down and discuss uh, many issues that nurses have been facing for a, a, a long time now. Um, but on the issue of pay, we have to be kind of quite robust on this, that we cannot afford a 19% increase. And so we do welcome the move that she wants to come and sit around the table with the Secretary of State and discuss the many issues in addition to pay that nurses are facing. Yeah, but pay is at the crux of it for them, isn't it? Uh, the figure might be something that you can negotiate and that's what they want, but the pay is critical, in their view, to getting numbers up on the wards, to making sure, in terms of conditions, that nurses aren't overstretched, they're not working longer and longer hours, which they are, that they're not coming on to a ward and finding that there aren't enough staff there because they can't recruit enough people, um, in order to actually keep patients safe. So to say we want to discuss conditions without looking at pay doesn't make sense to them. Well, what we have been uh, as a government, um, you know, we gave nurses a 3% pay rise last year when no one else uh, got a pay rise. And we introduced a system it's with the enough. independent... Pay... It's not enough, well, because we... since then, economic times have changed. Of course. Uh, we're, of course. Re we're experiencing inflation and it's a real-time cut. So, therefore, nurses are going to food banks to feed themselves at the end of the shift. That was then, this is now. So, we, so we've introduced a, an independent pay review body, which takes it out of the government's hands. And they look at a range of factors, including inflation, including uh, recruitment issues. Um, and, and they come up with a figure and they came up with 4.8 percent, which the government honoured in full. And that was uh, for this year. And they will be starting the process shortly for next year as well. And I would urge the RCN to, um, uh, to get into negotiations with the independent pay review body. But simply if we were to meet the 19 percent uh, demand of the RCN, that's £10 billion pounds that that would, would cost us. And we have to find the money from somewhere. But there's an additional factor here this year that inflation is the enemy for everyone at the moment. It's what's making the foods expensive in our shops, the petrol at the pump. Uh, our energy bills yes, go we, up. Yes, we all if we all know we, we all know that. But I think I think we I think we're drifting. Sorry, I think we're drifting slightly off the point here. I, I want to I'm drill down sure, into this because, because I think just, a lot of. No, I, I think I, I think a lot of people. I think a lot of people this morning. I think a lot of people this morning. I think a lot of people this morning. Minister, I think a lot of people this morning, they know about inflation, they're suffering from inflation. We don't need you to tell us about it, we, we get it. Let's drill down into this question of the government's refusal to meet the nurses' union. They have said, as Kate said in the introduction, that they will suspend the strikes, the, which are only a few days away now, if you will at least talk to them about pay. Now, you say that, that you can't do that, but excuse me, the Scottish government did, up in Holyrood, well, they spoke I, I, to I'm the nurses' said, union, and they, that. and, excuse me, let me finish the point, and they have reached a settlement. They have secured a settlement. It strikes, I think, a lot of people who heard the government response yesterday that they won't engage directly with the union, the nurses' union, that you're, you're frit that you're actually frightened of actually getting your hands dirty and you're leaving it to the NHS yeah. management. 
I don't think anyone can excuse, uh, accuse me of getting my hands dirty. I went back to the COVID wards during the pandemic. I'm still doing shifts now. So no one will be a, a greater mm. advocate for nurses than me. We are not refusing to meet with the nurses. The door is open. The Secretary of State invited the RCN last month to meet, which they declined. I'm pleased that they, they want to engage now. And I'm sure uh, meetings will be arranged, uh, you know, uh, as soon as possible that to, wasn't to meet with them. That wasn't about pay, though, was it? Or am I wrong? Well, that, well, we was just, that was just about it, conditions, and what they're arguing is that they're interlinked, you see, and they can't so be it was divided. About both. And so, I think the Secretary of State outlined, you know, why, uh, you know, that there is uh, the independent pay review body and why the pay settlement was agreed as it was. And on the issue of Scotland, while Scotland has agreed a, a, a deal with the RCN, it's not been agreed with the members. It's gone to ballot with the members, and we expect the result of that ballot on the 19th of December. And in Wales, for example, where Labour run the, the health service in Wales and in Northern Ireland, where it's the power sharing agreement uh, that, that runs the, the health service there, all four nations of uh, uh, the UK are having uh, these discussions with the unions. So, you know, th the door is open from the Secretary of State's mm. point yes, but of my view. Point, but Minister, Minister, in Minister, England. Minister, Minister my, my, my point was that the government in Scotland was willing to roll their sleeves up and sit opposite the unions across the table and hammer out a deal. And I can't personally, for the life of me, work out why you guys can't do the same thing. Because you've got a very well, important offer on the table the for the union. They have agreed I, I to postpone their strike action. And that strike action may lead, as we all know and we all fear, to unnecessary deaths. Now, it's a very, very big deal. Why can't you put your principles aside on, oh, no, we don't actually discuss pay with the nurses' union, and do what they did in Scotland and do it. Roll your sleeves up and sort this out, because that'll stop the strikes. Well, so the door is open, and as I said, Secretary of State offered a meeting to the RCN only no, last month. it's not. It's month, closed. You won't talk down. to them about pay. The door is Absolutely. not open. The, the door is not open. You're them. keeping the door the firmly shut. I can only, you know, keep repeating the same answer. The door is open. We have been engaged uh, with the RCN and other health unions um, on pay and on conditions. The door um, is not... Be... Oh, how can you say that the door is open? The door is not open. It's shut. You won't talk to the unions about pay. I have personally... So how can you say I... that's an open door policy? It's nonsense. Well, it is sorry, nonsense. that's just a logistical the nonsense. The state has, has, has met with the unions, has discussed pay and conditions, has put the government side of but the argument But you won't negotiate with them. You won't negotiate with them. If we you meet, refuse to negotiate with them. If we meet, uh, you I'm know, sorry, these are semantics. All right, so you, you're, you're right now first. promising when we talk to Pat Cullen that, that, that you, the door is open, the unions can come in, because, of course, it's not just the nurses. We have ambulance mm -hmm. workers and other critical parts of our health care provision. Um, you're saying that they will be able to come in and discuss their concerns on pay, and you will look again at the amount that you're going to give? Well, I think we've been very clear that we've got the independent pay review uh, body recommendation. Mm. If we were to go to 19%, which is what the RCN... Can I just say one thing? For, when you say the independent pay pounds. review, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, we've got a very bad signal, so I apologise for that. But when you say we're leaving it to independent pay review, to most people that looks like an excuse, and I'd like you to explain why it's not. Because what it looks like is you've created something that you can then pass the buck to, and actually that independent pay review doesn't really have any power. If you wanted to, you could instruct them to be more flexible about that, couldn't you? Or am I wrong? So we set up the, the independent pay review body on the agreement with the unions because they felt that the government weren't, uh, you know, over a number of years previously, uh, weren't recognising a number of factors. So that's why it was set up. And so it's difficult when that, that's been the process that has been agreed in England um, for them to suddenly override it. Because if we override it for nurses, we'll have to override it for ambulance workers, for all public sector workers. And if we were mm. to go to an inflationary, inflationary pay rise across the public sector, that would cost every household in the country a thousand pounds. All right. Um, and so, you know, we have okay. uh, difficult choice decisions to make, but the door is open for the unions if they want to come and speak to us. Well, let's let's okay. Well, let's let's hold on to that that notion of an open door. You've you've defended the, the government's position there. You've said that the door is open. I, I've challenged you on that because it seems to me that it's firmly shut, bolted, and locked. We're now joined by the chief executive and general secretary of the Royal College of Nursing, Pat Cullen. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Now, Ms. Um, thought very highly of you, Pat, <laughs> and says what a great advocate you are, as she is too for nurses. She still does shifts as a nurse as well as her job as health minister. Is that true? Is the door open? Have you been able to get the conversations with the government you need? Now, first of all, I have respect for Maria as a nurse and as our member. 
that's 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 leaving that aside. Um, she's wrong this morning. Uh, the door is firmly shut on myself and the 320,000 nurses who participated in this ballot for strike action. Those wonderful people that you're amongst this morning, um, that door is firmly shut. But what I'm saying to Maria and to the health secretary this morning, if they don't want to speak to me directly about nurses' pay, we have engaged with the conciliation service ACAS. Um, they can do that through ACAS. But our door is absolutely wide open, and it appears at the minute that theirs is totally shut. Can we be But they don't clear want to spend more money, do they? They they be made it very clear they've got to be careful with the public purse because it will spread across all areas of the public sector, and everyone is feeling the pinch. So, is there any room from co for compromise safely? on your side? Can you offer them that? Or do you just find there's a blank wall that you're facing? We can't get round a table to negotiate. That's the problem. Um, and I think Maria was a little bit disingenuous when she said that she's met, that the, the health secretary has met me um, a few times. He has met, met me once. Um, and on that occasion, it was a very, it was a collegiate meeting, um, but it was very clear from the minister that I was there to talk about anything but pay. And in fact, I was told not to be talking about pay. Um, and we spent 45 minutes in his office, and I certainly outlined a number of real key issues that are out with pay, that are very important to those nurses you see today, about their continuing professional development, about the level of violence and aggression they face every single day and night at work, all of those issues. But fundamentally, I need to get to a table and talk to them about pay. This isn't just me, it's the 320,000 nurses that voted for strike action. I'm speaking for them, not myself. It's those nurses you're there today with that I'm speaking for. They voted for strike action. I didn't vote for them on their behalf. They voted through an independent ballot that we carried out. And surely to goodness, you couldn't look at one of those people this morning in the eye and say, you're not worth an extra brown penny. In my mind, they absolutely are. OK, can we just be absolutely clear on what it is you're offering and, and what was offered over the weekend? You are guaranteeing that if the government agrees to meet you and talk about pay, not about necessarily conditions or related matters, but straightforwardly about the pay offer that's on the table, and negotiate with you face to face, as they did in Scotland, and they reached a settlement, which of course has to be put to the members, you are yes. guaranteeing that these strikes, we're, we're, we are nearly there, these strikes won't happen. You guarantee that, do you? If he gets round a table with us and has realistic, honest talks, there's a strong possibility that I will be able to go back to my council and say, um, I recommend that we avert the strikes and continue those negotiations. And I would also say that council will most certainly not be unreasonable about that. But I can do that right now, this very minute after I finish this call. Um, my door is absolutely wide open and my door is the Royal College of Nursing door. All right, and did okay. I pick up the signals right yesterday? Are you basically signalling to the government that obviously you want an increased offer, but you are prepared to consider an offer that's lower than the money that you've asked for? Is that right? Look, it would not be for me to negotiate, Richard, on the airwaves. I'm definitely not going to do that. That's for myself and the Health Secretary, or through conciliation with ACAS, to get round a table and do. But we will not be found wanting in getting in there and having those discussions. OK. Well, let's hope you do, because I'm sure none of your members want to strike. None Absolutely of we not. patients and people who need you want you to go on strike, because, of course, there are risks of that. But thank you very much for talking to us this morning. Thank you, Pat.